Yeah, so let's uh, start for the afternoon session. I'm happy to welcome um, the next speaker, Sultan Naduvari um, from Rolls-Royce Company. Um, Sultan has uh, studied electrical engineering at Budapest uh, University in Hungary. Then he has joined a Siemens company in Budapest, which was acquired by Rolls-Royce. So he has not really changed the company, just the company name has changed for him. And um, he used GMAC for aircraft application. And the title of his presentation is um, <clears throat> Electrical machine loss simulation and model validation using GMAC and MATLAB Simulink. Welcome, Soli. Is it is it okay? Perfect. So thank you for the introduction, and I would like to welcome everyone. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to present on this conference. Uh, my name is Zoltan Advari, and I'm uh, representing Rolls Royce Electrical. Uh, and my topic today, as it can be shown on the slides, is electrical machine simulation and model validation using GMAG and MATLAB Simulink, including both the sinus load and both the PWM load. So just a really quick overview about uh, what kind of challenges we have to face in the aerospace industry as electrical, this electrical machine design engineer. Um, these slides could be familiar to those who attended uh, last year in the European GMAC conference because I already showed this. But we are facing a little bit different challenges than the automotive industries, which are most of you working now. Um, this is a pretty new market, the uh, electric, uh, electrification of the uh, aircraft industry. Uh, and as you can see in the slides, the engineering creativity is really, really large, but it's limited by many factors in the aerospace industry, including the certification uh, and the uh, customer uh, requirements, which can define the weight and limits, uh, limit, uh, weight and size limits, the efficiency, the mission load profiles, the scalability, the cost efficiency, and even uh, the environment condition, which is really challenging for us at the low, uh, high altitude, and we have to cover really wide range of extreme temperatures. Of course, safety is first every day, uh, every time in the aerospace industry, but it's also affect the overall system design, the fault capability, the robustness, the maintenance needs. Uh, so we have to de uh, design a really robust design. And of course, rule of the physics, uh, you don't want to mess with it. Uh, so we will have a really limited like playground as an engineer to work with the aerospace industry, but we still have to be creative, both from product development and process uh, development point of view to be agile in this disrupting market. So in this slide, I just really uh, sketched a rough system uh, architecture for a hybrid electric car aircraft. Uh, and I pinpointed the components which can affect the electric car machine design uh, boundary conditions. And now, since the core start of the power electronics of this presentation, I would just focus on the last uh, or the bottom right uh, circle, the power electronics, which uh, of course have some maximum and minimum switching frequency based on the semiconductor type. Uh, it has different modulation uh, method, which uh, can affect the deceiving capacitor sizing and the losses in the inverter. Uh, it defines the maximum fundamental frequency for the electric car machine. And all of these uh, little parameters, I don't want to spoil things ahead, but um, these parameters are affecting the electric car machine losses and performance. Okay. So as we're getting closer to the electric car machine, uh, we have to do an iterative design loop through multidisciplinary, um, uh, multi-physics disciplines. So for example, uh, if we design a electric car machine, we can calculate the losses. The losses can be passed to the thermal engineers. The thermal engineers can pass back to us the temperature map for the electric car machine. And they also can map this temperature to the structure simulation to simulate the manica stresses, which is coming from the uh, thermal uh, uh, stresses from the electric car machine. And uh, of course, the power electronics itself is also affecting the electric car machine performance and the losses. 
last year in the GMAG user conference, I already covered one design loop, which is basically the design loop between the thermal analysis, the mechanical analysis, and the structural analysis of the machine, and how we can feed it back into GMAG, the mechanical stresses, which is affecting the losses in the core and also the overall BH curve of the machine. So the performance is also affected by this uh, effect. And today I will focus on the under the uh, design loop, which is basically the power electronics and electromagnetic design, how we can pass over the machine parameters into simulink, and how we can generate the waveform, which is also uh, including and considering the, uh, the PWM current ripples and how it's affect the electrical machine losses and performance. So just a quick overview about the reference machine. This machine was developed by uh, Rolls-Royce Electrical. It's uh, the application where it's uh, designed is a hybrid, a parallel hybrid uh, aircraft. The aircraft itself was designed uh, by Technam uh, and Technam also was responsible for the system installation. The in internal combustion engine was provided by Rotax and Rolls-Royce responsibility was the whole electrical system, including the electrical machine, power electronics, and also the battery. The machine itself is a three-phase permanent and synchronous machine uh, with a really large number of poles to reduce the mass of the machine uh, and with the mid-range speed range, uh, which means that the fundamental frequency is above 1000 Hertz. We have composite sleeve on the rotor uh, and we have some iron cobalt magnets. Uh, we didn't use any encoder to reduce the system compact, uh, complexity. Uh, through the in installation, uh, and we have to cover a uh, relatively large operation temperature. All of these parameters somehow affecting either the simulation or either the measurement of the losses. And just a really quick overview about the losses in a electric car machine. Of, the, of course, we have a stator, a stator iron core loss, and I use a little legend. Uh, the orange one, which is the a stator iron core, for example, and the magnet loss and rotor iron core loss is the thing which we can catch with simulation with some um, lack of confidence, let's say, for example, it is really hard to take into account the manica stress in the iron loss calculation right now due to lack of material data. And of course, some of the parameters we couldn't able to cover, which is basically one of the key components is the AC copper loss, because in this machine design, we have more than 1000 conductor in this slot. So it was really hard to model. And since it's a 3D problem, it also could cause some uh, high computing uh, resources and we didn't have the time to do so. And also the bearing loss, which is also some uh, effect in the, uh, some loss uh, uh, contributor in the overall losses. Uh, we have limited uh, loss data, which was coming from the bearing supplier, but that uh, loss data was given from one optimum temperature range for the battery and uh, for the bearing, sorry. Uh, but uh, we had measurements on a lower temperature, so it could affect the bearing losses. So I would like to just briefly show you the model setup, which I used in GMAG. Uh, and again, this project was mo mostly focused on the loss simulation, loss validation. The much quality was increased in the core, uh, both in the rotor and the iron, and of course in the air gap. Uh, and I've used uh, already built-in material uh, parameters from the GMAG library. Uh, I simulated uh, different ro rotational speed and uh, I set the magnet temperature for the most more realistic uh, temperature. Yeah, uh, one important uh, step which will be which will be important in the PWM uh, investigation that we used uh, the GMAX motor inductance calculator to, to define the machine parameters like the RD, RQ and the power flux. As for the loss calculation, uh, for the eddy current loss calculation, the core, we use the FFT method. And for the hysteresis loss calculation, we use the apply loop method, which is basically estimates the minor loop losses uh, based on the uh, flux field, flux density waveform of the simulation. As for the magnet simulation, of course, you have to change into 3D uh, just to keep the model simplicity. I only simulated one segment because, of course, the magnets are segmented on the rotor to reduce the eddy current losses. And I also or, 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 uh, I just simulated one for one pole. So I just increased the mesh density uh, in one pole. Uh, and I modified the conductivity of the magnet to match the lower temperature. 
on this slide, uh, I can show you the results of the simulation for the sinusoidal load. So basically, I used the per unit value as a reference for uh, for the 5,800 RPM, just to show you the tendency which was expected uh, from the frequency dependency of the core uh, loss or the, or the loss components. Of course, I set one uh, current, uh, the load current, so we can only see the frequency variation, not the current uh, variation of the losses. And in this side, you can see that the main contributor in the losses are DC current losses and also the state or iron core loss. As for the measurement, uh, we used uh, like variable power radiator, oil radiator to measure these uh, sinusoidal loads. So we, will, we were able to provide really nice sinusoidal waveform, uh, which had, to, uh, had us to, to get uh, a better validation for the stimulation results. And the loss, measured loss values are the following the tendency which were expected. And uh, this measurement was done during the winter time. Uh, so this is why we have a bit of uh, temperature uh, dependency on, for example, for the magnet loss. Of course, there is, there is a slight difference between the simulation and the test results. Uh, of course, uh, the test showed a little bit higher losses and you can see the red bars uh, that what's the difference at each uh, rotational speed. And you can see a slight frequency dependency uh, on the loss uh, deviation. And of course, the AC copper loss is also dependent on the frequency. And this, doesn't, this wasn't catched uh, during this project. So maybe this difference could be the AC copper loss. But however, we have other uncertainties in the simulation, the measurement. As I mentioned to you, the bearing loss uh, was a huge uncertainty because we have a lower temperature breeze, which means that the bearing loss could be even higher. And the other thing which we cannot like uh, uh, neglected is the iron loss and uh, how it's affected by the manufacturing topology or manufacturing technology like cutting processes and also the money cast stress. Since we had to cover a really wide range of temperature, operation temperature and application, it means that the core itself, uh, it's really stressed mechanically because we used press fit to transfer the torque from the rotor to the stator. So I did a little brainstorming uh, for this issue. So at the top figure, you can see a really simplified mechanical simulation for this electric car machine. And you can see that stress distribution uh, in the iron core itself. And I've just highlighted this light gray area, which is like basically penetrated by the mechanical stress. And this uh, area contains 36% of the stator core losses, which means if this uh, part is applied some mechanical stresses, the losses in this uh, uh, part could be uh, much higher than we simulated. Unfortunately, right now, we don't have the necessary material data uh, for the core which we uh, used in this application. So it's our task to increase our capability, material technology capability uh, for this soft monotic irons. And just to switch into the PWM uh, workflow. So what we developed is an automated process, which is basically calculate the motor inductance, cal motor inductance calculating the motor parameters is the motor inductance calculator to build into GMAG. And these parameters is used to parameterize this simulating simscape environment. And also we could define the switching frequency, different modulation method, the load current, and it's really easy to use for an electromagnetic design engineer as well. So you don't have to be aware about the control because the control engineer already de developed the control itself. Uh, and after that, we run a simulating simulation, and then we copy the simulation waveform as a text-based waveform right now into GMAG. So here you can see the different waveform which is generated uh, for space factor modulation. Of course, since we want to include all of the harmonic contents of the PWM uh, waveform, we had to increase the step size, uh, the number of steps in the simulation. Uh, which took more time. So this is why we only picked one rotational speed with different uh, switching frequency and different moderation techniques. As you can see in the figure, as we are increasing the current, uh, the switching frequency, the current ripple amplitude is reduced. Opa. 
and the other modulation technique which we uh, investigated a version of uh, discontinuous uh, pulse wave modulation uh, or so-called flat top modulation and in this case you can see that the power electronics control switching less uh, within one pwm period uh, which increased the uh, current ripple which affecting the torque ripple as well and also the losses and just a comparison between the simulation, I mean the simulating simulation and the measurement, uh, the blue line are the measured current waveforms and the red or orange lines are the simulating generated waveforms and you can see that those waves, waveforms are a pretty close match, which means that we can use this environment with a high confidence uh, during our design phase. And I think I picked the most interesting output of this simulation is the eddy current losses uh, in the magnets. So here you can see three different losses, time function, eddy current uh, losses in the magnet with different switching frequency, different modulation techniques. And you can see also the sinusoidal uh, losses, dual losses in the magnet as a reference. And you can see the differences between the switching frequency uh, and also uh, you can see that the PWM uh, waveform is sitting on the sinusoidal losses. Yeah, as a loss uh, measured, uh, loss measurement comparison, you can see two figures. The left side is the space factor modulation and the right side is the discontinuous PWM modulation. And these are strictly just the generator losses. We can see that the switching frequency is not really affecting the losses itself, but the discontinuous PWM modulation slightly increasing the electrical machine losses, uh, especially in the magnets and, of course, in the stator. As for the simulation, iron core uh, loss simulation, we've seen some uncertainty in the simulation, uh, which could cause by uh, lacking of proper material data. Uh, but we can see that uh, we also have this kind of frequency independent uh, tendency, but at the 28 kilohertz, the loss is uh, switching uh, in the favor of the discontinuous power modulation. And I haven't really find any like, uh, explanation to uh, why it's, it's happening. And as for the comparison with the, with the measurement, here we had larger deviation between the simulation and the measurement, but uh, I want to just uh, point out that all of the uncertainties which I've listed in the sinusoidal waveform, like the Manica stress dependency, uh, and also the bearing loss are still uh, right for this case as well. And above than that, which we faced and uh, which we had to accept it, that since I mentioned that we don't use any encoder in our measurement uh, either because the machine wasn't uh, fitted for any encoder um, installation. It means that the control is working in a sensorless operation mode and the sensorless operation mode due to the high phone number uh, induce some rotor position uh, observation error. And this rotor observation error can cause some unintended uh, D-axis current injection in the system, which of course can affect the uh, losses if the uh, machine is operating at field weakening operation, of course, the core losses can be reduced. But if it's operating at the field strengthening uh, operation mode, then it means that the losses will be um, increased. And we also done uh, some calculation or simulation for these cases. And this uncertainty can uh, put some plus minus five to 10 percentage just into iron core calculation, iron core loss calculation. And just uh, to show you why it's so important to work on this topic, that uh, what would be the best switching frequency and the modulation technique for uh, the system itself. The machine loss is not really affected by the uh, switching frequency and the modulation method, as you can see the bl blue bars. But if you check the inverter losses, it can be dr drastically reduced. So overall, you will have a much efficient system if you choose the proper modulation technique and choose the proper switching frequency. Yeah, and just a result and uh, just a summary that what we gained during this uh, little, let's say, play uh, 
which we've done that we developed a workflow within GMAG and MATLAB Simulink that how we can take into account with a high certainty or high confidence uh, the PWM effect on the loss calculation. But of course, we have to improve some of our knowledge, especially focusing on the material data of the iron core and both on the rotor and the stator, which means that we have to improve the material data at a higher frequency since we have re relatively large fundamental frequency. Uh, and also we have to include the stress dependence in the material data. And of course, the same is uh, go with the magnet losses, which means uh, that uh, we have to improve the resistivity uh, dependency of temperature dependency of the resistive to magnet material just to be more precise on the magnet simulation. And if these are, yeah, are improved and we can like cover these uncertainties, then it means that the missing loss could be the AC copper losses. And in this exact machine design, it's still really hard to catch uh, within simulation and both with measurement, this AC copper loss. And just a quick overview about the next steps, what we want to gain uh, in the next couple of months, if it's possible. We would like to refine the simulink and simscape simulation environment to be more robust. And if it could be more robust, then it means that we don't have to copy paste text-based waveform into GMAG, but we can use the ash function provided by GSOL just to drive the GMAG simulation with this uh, simulink simscape environment, which could improve the automation fidelity and also reduce the engineering load. And the other thing which we would like to investigate and of course try out that how we can improve the simscape environment by applying or, or um, inserting the GMAG uh, RT machine models and loss maps instead of the permanent mass synchronous machine models built into simscape. And just for this exact project or this machine design, of course, it would be nice to do a more detailed 3D simulation to catch or pinpoint other possible source of losses, like for example, the shaft currents, uh, eddy currents in the shaft. And also we have to improve the material database quality, which means in how it, it means we have to do it in house within Royce Royce uh, to have a much better material data. And of course, coupling the simulation with Nanica stress uh, simulation and possibly with thermal simulation as well would also improve the whole accuracy of our simulation workflow. And thank you. Soli, thank you very much for this presentation. I suppose you have some questions or remarks. Thank you very much. Very nice presentation. Uh, very simple question. Uh, I think slide 17, could you slide, slide 17. Uh, magnet loss. I, uh, I misunderstood something. Um, Magnet loss uh, seems depend on speed. Is it correct? Oh, <laughs> difficult control. Uh, the and what next one? Uh, oh yeah, that, that one. That one. This one? No, a bit previous. Previous one. Yes, this one. Yeah. It's a. I think it's a magnet loss is a gray. Yes. Color, right. Yes. So then it's increasing. Uh, speed its speed increase yes it's why why, why? because you, you will have larger frequencies so it means that the current will but be the, the, uh, i think its main source of magnet loss is pwm uh, it's, it's, it's sinusoidal it's sinusoidal losses but it, i think that rotating field is a synchronized with the rotation right it's a synchronous machine yes so main field is is this doesn't yeah, change but, um, so it, if it distorted distortion is increased then it explains but yeah we uh, have, I, I wonder what, we, we, what's have, we have a uh, constellated binding with a really large slot uh, opening so this slot opening caused the uh, uh, distortion yes distortion okay. yeah okay i understand it's very clear yeah. thank you so much thank you Hello, uh, may I ask you a uh, previous slide you demonstrated about measurement data. If I get it right, yeah, exactly. Uh, you use current 
54, 55, it's supposed to be nominal current, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's not a peak current, is it? Uh, no, it's it's uh, RMS value and it's uh, slightly below the nominal load of the machine yeah, because so it's kind of nominal. Yeah, and you've got to wind the temperature twenty six degrees just. Yes. What, what have you got a management uh, at peak currents? Uh, with, yeah, but yeah, the so, and question to the same uh, picture. Have you compared these results to simulation? Take yes. Take yes. This this was what I showed on this that these are the comparison between the test sorry uh, i don't know from my mind what was the accuracy of the loss measurement but i think it was like 0.5 percentage or one percentage yes Yeah, and of course the winding temperature and so on and so on. And back to your question at how we could manage this really low temperature is that because this test facility uh, is a, is, it was just under constructions and we didn't have any like climate or, or AC uh, uh, air conditioning, even we don't, didn't have any heaters and it was done in the winter. So this was the trick that, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have a question about the, um, the switching frequency, the choice of the switching frequency to reduce uh, the losses. Uh, in fact, if we reduce the frequency, we, of course, we reduce the, um, the inverter losses, but it could have an effect on the iron loss of yes. the machine. With a lower frequency, we may, uh, it may lead to, 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 to higher uh, iron loss. Is there a compromise? Have you found a compromise regarding this matter? In this machine, we didn't. So we didn't push the limits of the cooling uh, efficiency, the cooling performance of the machine. So in this operation mode on this machine, exact machine, we, were, we have the reserve in the cooling power. Mm -hmm. So it, it would, we, we could say that we could operate the machine with a much lower temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, well, sorry, much lower uh, switching frequency, but and we can reduce the the switching frequency significantly and the losses in the power electronics. But of course, in any other de uh, design, since we have to push the limits uh, and we have to really increase the power to weight ratio for application for application, mm -hmm. it could be challenging to to tackle these extra losses. So that's why we want to catch this phenomenon at the very beginning of the design phase. And also we have like really um, state-of-the-art power electronics, which we are currently developing. And it's also kind of a uh, uh, tricky issue to drive away the heat from the power electronics mm -hmm. itself, if you want to keep it compact. So this is why we have to check these trade-offs and see where we can increase the cooling performance with the, let's say the less impact on the overall system weight. So this is why we comparing this in this little application, which is not really really volume and weight mm -hmm. uh, restricted, but our future development or the current development are uh, really uh, uh, weight and, and volume restricted. All right. So uh, your approach is based on the, um, on the cooling, let's say. So yes. you, you prefer in this case to, to have more losses on the machine rather than having them uh, on the inverter. Yes, exactly. Okay. Because you have mu much larger thermal mass on mm -hmm. the electrical machine, much it's, it's much more robust. Mm. Than a power electronics where you can just a little over temperature you can burn your semiconductors. All right, and you don't have uh, problems regarding, for example, the consumption on WLTC cycles or no something. Uh, you don't have pressure on uh, on this matter. No. All right. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Fourth one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Um, for PWM uh, current ripple analysis, do you actually consider cross coupling between phases, or do you just use a LDLQ model? In this case, we use LDLQ model, but we want to develop a machine model where we can use this, especially since most of our application is not a single C phase system, but n by three phase system. And we have to really consider the interference between the lanes and how it's affect the overall stability of the system. But right now we are not yet there. This is kind of a next step development for, for us. Okay. 
um, and maybe an additional question, do you have, a, or does the simulation start to fall apart compared to measurement data if you reduce switching frequency or up to an extent? Well, we realize that if we are increasing switching frequency, by which part of simulation? Uh, during ripple analysis. Yeah, it's, it's definitely yes. So we have this really like frequency limit, uh, minimum switching frequency we have to able to provide to really feed the machine with the sinusoidal load. So yes, it's, it's fall apart, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Last question. No, okay. Then thank you very much, Soli, for your great presentation. Thank you for the questions.